Hello. Today I'm going to be explaining the very weird phenomenon of magnetic resonance and showing examples of how it is applied to protein mapping and modern medicine. So let's begin. By breaking down magnetic resonance, let's separate the two words to get a clearer idea of the concept. Magnetic. Magnetic is a deviation of magnetism. Magnetism is one of the four fundamental forces of physics and the main force acting on the nucleus in magnetic resonance. Magnetism also defines the magnetic field that aligns the nuclei with the intrinsic quality of spin in a uniform pattern. The term spin will be addressed later in lecture. Resonance. Resonance can be defined in many contexts. However, in our case, resonance is the tendency of a system to absorb energy when a specific frequency matches the natural frequency of the system. For example, a tuning fork, when struck, has, the vibra has vibrations. The vibrations of the tuning fork increase when a note is played at the resonance frequency. The fork has, has resonance since it is able to absorb the energy of the specific frequency and translate it into kinetic energy. Now that we have broken down the parts, let's piece together the whole. Magnetism also magnetism defines a magnetic field's ability to create a uniform conformation of nuclei with spin. Resonance is a system's ability to gain energy from a frequency. Magnetic resonance, therefore, is a nucleus's ability to follow a magnetic field and have resonance when a radio frequency is applied simultaneously. So what does it mean to follow a magnetic field and how does a nucleus have resonance? Before I explain more about magnetic resonance, I will talk about nuclear spin and its importance to the, the overall concept. Nuclear spin. Nuclear spin Only molecules with the intrinsic property of spin can be affected by magnetic resonance and release of photon. Spin is a quality of isotopes like carbon-13 and of hydrogen, both elements with unequal nuclei. Unequal nuclei have different amounts of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. This unequal ratio causes an unbalancing effect of the nucleus, which leads to, fer which leads to a nuclear magnetic moment. A nuclear magnetic moment is the amount of force an applied magnetic field can exert on a particle. To clarify, the size of a nuclear magnetic moment controls how fast a particle spins in line with a magnetic field. The bigger the nuclear magnetic moment, the faster the spin of the nucleus in a magnetic field. So once again, spin is a property of the nucleus with unequal protons and neutrons. The unequal nucleus allows the atom to be affected by a magnetic field in a property known as nuclear magnetic moment. Now that we understand spin, I will ask again, what does it mean to follow a magnetic field, and how does a nucleus have resonance? A nucleus follows a magnetic field by aligning its nuclear spin in the direction of the magnetic force. The image on the left shows an example of nuclear spin without a magnetic field. As you can see, the direction of the spins are random. The molecule on the right is exposed to the magnetic field B0, whose direction is shown with the arrow. The spin directions of the molecule on the right follow the force of the magnetic field. The nuclei follow the, the direction of the magnetic, magnetic field lines because of the nuclear magnetic moment being activated by the force of the magnetic field. Thus, the nuclei have lower energy going along with the force. Observe how the spin directions follow the magnetic field. This is because the nuclei are at a state of lower energy. As you recall, resonance is a system's ability to absorb energy if the right frequency is applied. A nucleus with spin can have resonance with radio waves. The radio waves are absorbed 
and the energy of the nucleus increases, allowing the nuclear spin to rebel against the magnetic field and go against it in a state of higher energy. The arrow on the screen points to a nucleus with, with a spin direction opposite that of the magnetic field. That means the nucleus is in a state of higher energy. When the radio when the radio wave stops, the nucleus returns to its lower energy state. When the nucleus returns to follow the magnetic field, it releases the built-up energy as a photon. The photon is a marker of the nucleus, and that, and that can be read and translated into an image. So let's review the process of magnetic resonance. Only atoms with spin are candidates for magnetic resonance. Spin is a result of unequal nuclei. Spin creates a nuclear magnetic moment allowing the isotopes or hydrogen to be affected by a magnetic field. When the molecules with spin are placed inside a magnetic field, they align themselves with the direction of the force. Going along with the force puts the nuclei into a state of low energy. When a radio wave pulse is applied to the nuclei, is applied, the nuclei absorb the energy thus embodying the idea of resonance. The nuclei with the absorbed energy are now in a high energy state until the radio wave stops and they return to a state of low energy. When a nucleus jumps from a state of high energy to a state of low energy, the excess en energy is released as a photon, thus allowing the position of the nucleus to be marked. It is the photon that is used for practical purposes like protein modeling and medical imaging. Now that we understand the process of magnetic resonance, let's explore some of its more practical applications. NMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance, uses magnetic resonance to model 3D protein structures. The process involves a very powerful magnet and uses various isotopes with nuclear spin. A protein is translated with spin molecules, aka isotopes, and a 3D image is compiled through the photon markings. MRI, or medical resonance imaging, uses magnetic resonance to generate a 3D image of an animal. The procedure uses hydrogen atoms in water to differentiate various tissues. The brain, for example, the brain has a different amount of water density than the surrounding tissues. The photon capturing device is able to di differentiate various tissues by the amount of signaling photons it receives. Therefore, a distinction between various tissues is made. These have been the uses of magnetic resonance. Further, if you are interested in further study on magnetic resonance, I suggest you view The Principles of Magnetic Resonance, Springer Series and Solid State Sciences by Charles P. Schlinger, Schlater, or Spin Dynamics, The Basics of Nuclear Magnetic Resonance by Malcolm H. Levitt. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.